Hey everybody, Henry W. Steele here. In this video, I'm going to talk about a moving average crossover technique that's a bit different than your average or normal moving average crossover. If we look really quickly, we can see this is US dollar, Canadian dollar cross pair. It's a five minute chart. And we have two moving averages that are on this chart. And if you pay attention, these moving averages never actually cross each other. We'll take a quick look. This is a 12 period moving average. It's a simple moving average and it shifted three periods into the future. This green moving average is applied to the high, while the red moving average is exactly the same, but it's applied to the low price. So that explains why these two moving averages never cross each other, because they're identical, except one's applied to the high and one's applied to the low. We actually get our cross over in this technique with a trend line. Now what we're looking for is a top or a bottom, and we draw a trend line from that top to the corresponding top in the uh, moving average. I'll show you here. From here to not this top, see not this one price here, but we're actually drawing it to the top part of the moving average there. It crosses over right about there is good. That looks good right about there. Now, what we're expecting, what we're waiting for is the moving averages to cross over this trend line and when that happens, we can expect most likely we'll get another top within this time frame. Sometime between here and here, we can expect the top. And we see we get the right at the very beginning of our window of opportunity. We see the top right here, and we see the second little top right there. So we're getting our tops like we anticipated. And usually what happens if price is pretty close to the trend line, it will come to the trend line and stop. You see that we're expecting a top right here in this time frame, and the trend line is below, excuse me, below the price action right there. So we can expect it to move down to the price action. Um, this one's pretty easy to draw, as you can see, because we have a clear top and a clear top right here. If we look at a low situation right here, we have a decent clear low, and we have a decent clear low in the moving average. And if we put those two together, right, right about there is right. We see that in this time frame right here, we get a low right here. The actual lowest point happens a little bit earlier, not quite a full candle earlier. But we get a low right here and it moves up for a little bit. We just get a retracement in the downtrend and then it continues to move forward down. Now one thing I want to point out is the best time to use this is the most volatile time of trading. And for this cross pair, it's like 7 a.m. to noon, somewhere around there, 7 a.m. to 1 p.m., something like that. Once you get into the afternoon hours, you're getting very, very small movements typically. So you really don't want to um, trade in those times. If we have, you know, if we have a moving average that crosses over right here, for instance, or a trend line rather that crosses over the moving averages, uh, it probably wouldn't be the best time to take a trade. This is 2.30 in the afternoon. And so the movements we can expect are going to be pretty slim. Now, in some cases, for instance, like this one, we had almost identical to what I just drew right here. There we go. We're showing a top right around here, and we have a, a decent guesstimate as to where the price is going to go because the trend line's there, and we expect it to move to the trend line And since it was only a few pips away. So we've got a good, I don't know, 10 pips there, maybe. Uh, let's see. Another thing we need to take a look at is that while we have nice curves right here, there are some times where... The market makes a double top and creates a slightly unusual type curve where this top right here is actually represented by this part of the curve and this higher top produces this slightly higher bump right there. The thing you got to pay attention to is the fact that not always will the highest point in price produce the highest point in the curve so it can get a little bit confusing. But don't let that worry you just play around with it. We move again to the next point in time where we're pretty volatile. Let's see. Our volatility goes up. Um, this is a good, I guess that's a good time we can use. We'll try it here. We have a high here. 
and the highest price is right here. The highest point in the trend line is right here. And we see that price does not get to the trend line for what turns out to be a very long period of time, a couple of days it looks like. But when it does cross over, we do have this point in time to this point in time, and we get our high in that window right there. And then the market moves down significantly, moves down straight through our trend line. And we get a nice little, let's see, 20, 30 pip move there. Um, let's look at another one. Here is a low to corresponding low is actually right here. It's not the lowest point in the moving average, but it is the lowest point in price. And we get from here to here, and we can expect the market, it has a small bottom here for a little retracement before it moves all the way down right there. Let's see, whoops. Let's find a good one right here. There's one. We have a low right here with a decent corresponding low right here. And it, there we go. It actually produces because it touches the red line right here and comes right up and eventually touches the green line. It produces the zone of opportunity from here to here, in which case we do get our low and it's right here at the trend line. Then the market moves up from that. So there are times where you have to pay attention because it happens right away. Then there are other times, like the example I had just shown you, where you might have to wait several days for it to cross over. You might actually forget about it. Here's a secondary low right here that produced this little bump right here. So if we put that like that, we get the future right here. Crossover happens here to here. And we get that nice, nice pointed low right there. And it moves all the way up here and almost comes and touches the trend line right there. So that's a nice opportunity. We have several situations that happen like this. We have a high right here and there's no real easy place to put it this high right here kind of produced this right here but it's it's when it's too confusing or kind of iffy don't do it just save yourself the stress or the trouble we have a high here which produces it looks like this high right here maybe uh maybe right here i guess let's see that looks about right and it produces this window of opportunity where we get the high right here. It moves down, comes, actually moves through the trend line, which is nice. So we get extra movement in the price right there. This video is already eight minutes long, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. If you have any more questions about this, please feel free to make a comment. And if we have enough questions, I'll make a secondary video to answer all that. Otherwise, I'll just answer the comments in the video section.